that's why it's right here. What is it, page five for me? No, we just have your graduation. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, what's the date? When do we get to 15? I mean, I'm boarding mine this year. How much I? I think I'm going to wait. Mine's like 423 or something. Well, no, I mean, just so you recognize it as an I. So I, I write it, try to make it a cursive I like that so I don't get confused with a one or something. So while you're finishing up getting your notes started there, talking about complex numbers today, this lesson in the book that I'm using for this unit that we're working on, this lesson was intended to go with yesterday's lesson. They wanted to do it both together, but I kind of thought that might be a little bit too heavy. So we shortened it into a short one yesterday and a short one today, instead of trying to cram it all into one day. So reason that we have complex numbers here, y'all got that written down, so I can go to another page. Reason that we have complex numbers is based off of what we talked about yesterday. If we looked at yesterday, the square root of 25, we're asking ourselves what times itself equals 25? Well, that could be five, or it could be negative five, right? And we learned we could use that fancy plus minus sign that makes us look smarter and we could do that. But now, if we had the square root of negative 25, this is a new, a new deal now, because there's, remember, square root means a number times itself. So there's no way I can do the same number times itself to get a negative, is there? Because a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So this makes it be called what is a non-real number, and we're learning today about an imaginary number. So how we'll attack something like this, anytime we've got a square root with a negative underneath it, we're gonna say that's the same as the square root of negative one times 25, right? That I didn't, I didn't do any voodoo math there. That's correct. Negative 25 is negative 1 times 25. Now, the reason we want to do that is based off of what we wrote down on the previous screen. Square root of negative 1 comes out as an I. So, we talked about our wiffle ball game that we had yesterday. Square root of negative 1, I'm going to bring an I out to play in the game. Square root of 25, I'm going to bring a 5 out to play in the game. Put your plus minus sign. There you go. So really, if you don't get bogged down and start freaking out, thinking, oh my gosh, there's a such thing as an imaginary number, it's not very difficult. You see you got a negative underneath the square root, just know your answer's gonna have an I in it. And you'll do everything else the same as we did yesterday. Okay? All right, so let's look at what that would look like in solving an equation, because that's what, what we're ultimately wanting to do is solve these quadratics. So let's say I gave you the problem 2x squared plus 11 is equal to negative 37, and we're trying to solve for x. Uh, well, we the only ways we still know so far are factoring and by using square roots. Those are the only two methods we've still covered so far. So on this one, there's no B, right? We've got AX squared, or A is two, but we don't have a BX, so there's no B. So the easiest thing to do would be to solve them like we did yesterday, just taking, solving it algebraically and taking square roots. So let's, where'd my marker go? I can't see it. I don't know where I'm writing. Oh, there it went, there it went. So let's just start like we would in middle school and start isolating the variable. Subtract your 11 from both sides. So we have 2x squared equals, is that negative 48? Okay, so then what would our next step be? Not yet. 
Got to get rid of that two next. Divide by two, good. So I get me x squared is negative 24. Okay, now I'm ready to undo that squared and what undoes a squared? Square root, so my x is gonna equal positive negative, whatever the square root of negative 24 is. So this is where we're combining yesterday's stuff and today's stuff. So today's stuff, let me jump up here to the top. Today's stuff, I'm gonna know that negative 24 is the same as negative one times 24. So that's gonna allow me to bring the i out. The square root of negative one is i. But yesterday's stuff on that list of perfect squares we made is 24 on the right side of that. Is it a perfect square? No. no. We go from 16 to 25, so we miss it. So we gotta start working backwards and find the biggest perfect square that'll go evenly into 24. Two is not a perfect square. Okay, so four will go how many times? Okay, remember this is what we did yesterday now. So now all I'm gonna do is if it's a perfect square, I'm gonna bring its square root out to the football game. If it's not, it's gotta stay in the house and do chores. So I'm gonna have X equals square root of negative one gets to come out as an I. Square root of four, this is where Christian was ahead of me, is two, so I'm bringing a two out. And you normally put the number in front of the I, like that. And then six has to stay in the house and do chores. And then I need to not forget that plus minus sign, and that's your final answer. So it's really good for us because we're getting a lot of practice on the stuff we did yesterday. We just added a little I in there. And again, if we'll just make the mental note that any time it starts off with a negative underneath the radical, you're gonna have an eye. It's not gonna to be too bad for you. Okay, now, I wanted to do one more of those for right now and then we'll finish our lesson off with one of them. Let's do one more of those for right now before we shift gears. I got that one? All right, this one says x squared plus 11 is equal to three. I'm gonna let you get started on that. So later on, once we've practiced this a lesson or two, I'm probably not going to show all these steps. There's, you know, you'll, you'll be able to start taking some shortcuts and stuff. But first thing we did was just got that isolated the x, so we subtracted 11. That's where I got my negative 8 from. Then I want to undo the squared, so I'm square rooting. And square root of negative 8 is the same as negative 1. I put that to remind myself of an i, but I might not always do that. I might can just say, hey, there's a negative, bring an i out. Okay, and then I broke down eight with the biggest perfect square that'll go evenly into it, four, and how many times? Two. So now all I'm ready to do is start the wiffle ball game. So did, is everybody okay with what I've done there? Everybody good with that? Okay, so square root of negative one is an I. So I'm gonna bring I out. Square root of four, it's 
So I'm done with that. Square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to bring a 2 out. And then 2 doesn't have a perfect square, so it has to stay. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. How'd you do? Maybe, maybe didn't get it spot on, but close for your first try. Good, 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 good. good. Christian, I've noticed you've got like a five-minute zone process, and you know what's going on, but you're in that zone process, and then all of a sudden, yeah, okay. <laughs> the four-page zone. You'll be reading a book, and then all of a sudden, you're like, go black. <laughs> and you'll have read four pages, but remember nothing. Yeah. That's happening in that. Yeah. I hate well, that's it. how the whole book is. <laughs> Okay, so the one of the other things that was written on the Delray, on the note page that got you started when you came in, it said A plus B I. That is called standard form of a complex number. And all that means, I'm gonna put the hashtag, that's really the number symbol. All that means is that the real number, the number without an I, the real part of it is first. And then the imaginary number, the number that has an I, is second. So to write it in proper form, you always put the real number first and the imaginary number second. So these next few problems that we're going to do are not going to be solving quadratics. It's just going to be learning how to work with complex numbers. And this is actually what your assignment, virtual assignment, is going to be over tomorrow. So this will be a good start on that. Okay, so let's say I had the quantity of 8 minus I plus the quantity of 5 plus 4i. And the directions say to write it as a complex number in standard form. Now this is really the easiest type of problem you can have because you were taught back in your middle school days to combine like terms, and it's the same thing here. You're just going to, since this is an addition problem between the two, you're going to add your real numbers, you're going to add your imaginary numbers, you're going to make sure you got them in standard form. Tell me, Christian. Wouldn't a negative add like a positive one? No. Well, like positive. I don't know how to explain it. But it's like less than one. We're going to get into working with the I squared in a minute, and that's what you're thinking about. Because I squared is negative one. But just I, it just, you leave it an I. I know, it's, it's wacko. I know, I know. Just all right. So let's look at our real numbers. I'm gonna combine those dudes. It's an addition sign, so eight plus five is gonna give me a thirteen. Okay. Then if I go to look at my imaginary numbers, I got a negative i plus a four i. So that's like negative one plus four, which is three. That's your answer. You just leave it like that. All you did was combine the like terms. My yellow, yellow, and my green, green. <laughs> so same thing if we had a subtraction. I got 7 minus 6i minus 3 minus 6i. Okay, so... We look here, our real numbers has a seven minus a three. So that gets me four. And then be careful with the signs now on your imaginary numbers. You got a negative six I minus a negative six I. What's negative six I minus negative six I? I think it's a zero. I think uh, Christian is right there. So I could say, plus zero I, but do I need to put that? I would just say four. Pretty easy stuff, huh? All right, let's look at one more add before we do add and subtract, and then we'll move to multiply. That's where we're going to start getting those I squared. It's Christian's ready for Okay, 
So this has got 10 minus the quantity of 6 plus 7i and then plus a 4i. So this one's weird the way all those signs are written. So what we need to remember from a long time ago is that when you're subtracting this parentheses, that means you want to subtract both all the parts of it, right? So I want to have a 10 minus a 6, and I also need to subtract that 7i as well, right? So let's combine that. 10 minus 6 I can do, that's 4. But I can't combine an I with a 4, so I'm just going to bring that 7i down. And now look, I haven't messed with this 4i yet, so let's drop it down to the party, because now I can combine those terms. So I know I just kind of did that, and y'all are thinking in warp speed. But the only thing, the reason I wanted to do this is because they just try to trick you with that subtraction sign. Remember that if you're subtracting a whole quantity, you got to subtract both parts of it. But after that, it was just, you know, you could count those on your fingers if you needed to. All right, let's move to some multiply. I got 4i times the quantity of negative 6 plus i. Okay, aside from the crazy imaginary numbers, you're going to do here exactly what you think you would. You got something right outside of parentheses, so you're going to distribute it to everything inside the parentheses. Okay, so you ready? Here we go. 4i times negative 6. Just multiply your 4 and your negative 6, and then it just has an i with it. So kind of you're just treating that I like a variable, kind of, aren't you? Kind of. Okay, now i got to go, here's where something new is going to come in. i got to go 4i times i, and that's 4i squared. Okay? We can't leave an i squared in our answer. On the very first page, we wrote down that i squared is the same as negative 1. So anytime you have an i squared, you got to replace that with negative 1. So this is going to be negative 24i plus 4 times negative 1. Okay, and you know what 4 times negative 1 is. So I could say this is the same as negative 24i minus 4. Right? You with that? But I still can't stop. I've done all the math there is to do, but I can't circle that yet. That's not in standard form. What's supposed to come first in standard form? The real number. So I just need to flip these up now. Negative 4 minus 24i. Very good. Would negative i squared be a positive term? Yes. Very good thinking. So you've done everything up there before. It's the only new thing is you had to take the I squared out and put in a negative 1. All right. Let's look at a binomial times a binomial now. 9 minus 2I times negative 4 plus 7I. So I'm going to take my 9, distribute it to both of these. I'm going to take my negative 2i, distribute it to both of those, and then see if I can simplify it after that. And we've got to end up in standard form. So here we go. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. 9 times 7i be a positive 63i. Okay, I'm good with the 9. Y'all all right? Now I'm going to take the negative 2i, so negative 2i times negative 4 be a positive 8i. And then negative 2i times 7i would be negative 14i squared. Very good. Okay, so a couple of things that we're going to do. First thing I notice, and just like all of our FOIL problems, 
there's like terms there in the middle to combine. So negative 36, is that 75? 63 plus oh. 8, is that 75? No, 71, thank you. Plus 71i. Now when I bring down that negative 14i squared, I'm going to go ahead and replace the i squared. So I'm going to bring down negative 14 times negative 1. And what happens there with that negative times the negative? It's a positive. So am I done? No, you can't combine again. Good, I got some real numbers now to combine. Negative 36 plus 14. Negative 22. Is that right? And remember the real number needs to go in the front. Wasn't that fun? Do you remember about um, my evil cousin conjugate? Uh, so, yes. Let's check it out. Uh, I can't pull out. Yep, let's check that out. This will be the last hard one we'll do, and then we'll finish up with an easy one. So I got 7 plus 5i over 1 minus 4i. So we did addition, we did subtraction, we did multiplication. Now this is a division problem. But the deal is, we don't know how to divide this. So all we really want to do is the same thing we did with the radicals yesterday. We want to cancel out the radical on bottom. So here I want to cancel out the imaginary number on bottom. So we're going to do that by multiplying by its conjugate. And the conjugate, we keep the 1 and the 4i like they are. We just change the sign between them. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus 4i. And whatever I do on bottom, I have to do on top. Now, if you take a gander at what's fixing to happen, the previous problem you just did, you had a binomial times a binomial, right? You're going to have to do that twice now because you've got that on top and bottom. So let's just start rolling here on the top. I'm going to go 7 times 1, 7 times 4i. Okay, now I'm going to take my 5i. So 5i times 1, and 5i times 4i, the 20i squared. Okay. I can combine that those i's in the middle, 28i and 5i, 9, 31, 2, 33. So 7 plus 33i plus 20 times negative 1, right? So that means 7 plus 33i minus 20. So now combine your 7 and your negative 20, and that's real, so put it in front. So I'm looking at negative 13 plus 33i for my numerator. All that work just got me the numerator. Now we got to do the same thing on the denominator. But remember, what happens on the denominator when you multiply by the conjugate is all the i's are probably going to cancel themselves out. So that's kind of what we're expecting to happen down here. We'll do the denominator in red. 1 times 1. 1 times 4i. Okay. And then negative 4i, whoops, times 1. And then negative 4i times 4i, negative 16i squared. Okay, so 4i and negative 4i, that's nothing, he gone. So I got 1 minus 16 times negative 1, right? Because i squared is negative 1. So that negative times a negative will make that a positive. So I got a denominator of 17. So all I got to do now for my final answer is take my numerator and put it over my denominator. Sometimes that will be able to simplify, but 13 and 17, those are prime numbers, so it's not going to be. Now, let me show you different ways you could write that same answer. This one, this whole piece is over 17. 
That's the same as putting them each individually over 17. Right? I usually don't go that step, but just in case you ever see that on the ACT, you'll know that's the same thing. Now, I told you yesterday when we did that conjugate with the radicals, that's not a common problem, and it's the same with imaginaries. It's not common, but it, you just got to remember to multiply by its conjugate. Keep the digits the same. Just change that sign in the middle. All right, so let's go back now to the solving. Make sure we can solve with an I for an answer. I'll do one more with you and then let you maybe try one and see how it goes. Let's say I had 2x squared plus 31 is equal to 9. All right, let's do this one together and then I'll give you one after it. What would I do first to start solving for x? Subtract the 31. Good, sir. Good, sir. So it gets me... 2x squared is equal to negative 22. Is that right? 9 minus 31. Good. Christian concurs. Now what would I do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So I've got x squared is equal to negative 11. We're rocking. Now what would I do? Uh, square root. Square root. So x is going to equal the positive negative square root of negative 11. Okay, now if you get here and you're, this is where you might be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Well, you know your square root of 11, so you look down the right side of our yesterday's chart, and there's no 11. It goes from 9 to 16, so there's no 11. 9 won't go into 11, 4 won't go into 11, so 11 is going to stay in the house. But there is something that needs to come out of the house because of that negative. And I, very good. So all I'll do to write my answer is x is plus or minus i square root of 11. Very good. x squared minus 22 is equal to negative 112. See if you can solve that.
All right, what'd you do first? Hello? Um, subtracted the 25. I mean, added your Good. So that got you x squared is equal to negative 90? Yeah. And then you can just square root it because it's already. Right, we don't have anything to divide by, so good. So x will be positive, negative, whatever the square root of negative 90 is. So we know that negative is going to bring an i out. Okay, so 90, is that on the right side of your yesterday's chart? No. No. So we got to find what is. So what did you find? Nine. Nine. Okay, so it's going to be negative 1 times 9 times 10. So now I'm going to bring the perfect squares. Their square roots are going to come out and play. And then the non-square roots, non-perfect squares will stay in the radical. So I got plus or minus square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 9 is 3. Poor 10 is left in the radical. How'd you do? I got it. You see where you got confused at, Holly? Yeah. Okay, sure. Tell me if you don't. I don't, I don't mind. Okay, so what we're looking at for the next couple of days, tomorrow is going to be an assignment working with those imaginary numbers. So it's not going to be as much as the solving as it was the adding, subtracting, and multiplying stuff. So you'll have an assignment over that tomorrow. And then on Friday, I mean Thursday, we're going to move on to our next method. So we'll be looking at method number three on Thursday. Sound like plan, Sam? Mm -hmm. All right. Attention teachers.